Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Pastor Mike Drodis, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. Recently, one of the, my viewers asked me a question. They asked, will an unsaved individual see the Lord in the clouds at the rapture when it happens? That's a great question. And I've been thinking about that as well. So let's go to the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about the rapture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 52, Paul is talking to the church about the rapture. He's explaining it. And he says something very interesting. He says in verse 51, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Paul is teaching about the rapture, and he's explaining that when this event happens, those who are alive will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. A twinkling of an eye is very, very, very fast. It's the amount of time that light has to reflect off the lens of your eye. It's a fraction of a second. So the answer to the first part of that question is, will somebody witness who's not born again, will they witness that transformation taking place as the rapture occurs? No, it will happen so quick, so fast, that people won't even see it coming. As Jesus said, two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Two men will be sleeping. One will be taken, the other left. The rapture will happen so quick. The change of our mortal bodies will happen so quick from a mortal body to a resurrected body. It will happen so quick that no one will see it. No one will witness that. No one will see that happen. But let's look at the sequence a little bit more. Because Paul also explains what's going to happen uh, at the sequence uh, running up to the rapture. And how the believers will actually, I believe, I witness some of these things. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Once again, Paul is teaching the church about the rapture. And he's explaining now the sequence. He says in verse 15 of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. You see, the church in Thessalonica was concerned. They had loved ones who had died, and they thought that since they died, they were going to miss out on the rapture. But Paul's explaining to them, they, you have nothing to worry about. Your loved ones who have already died, and I'm talking to you as well, who's watching this video, you may have loved ones who have died. They're not going to miss out on the rapture. In fact, when the rapture occurs, they're the first ones to be changed. Now hold on for a minute. When someone dies, uh, who's in Christ, they immediately go to be with the Lord. Their spirit goes to be with the Lord, but their bodies are still left here on the earth. At the rapture, their, their bodies will be resurrected and then caught up to be with the Lord. Let's go on, because it gets good. So Paul's explaining that those who have already died, they go first. In other words, their bodies go first. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. You see, there it is. The dead in Christ go first. They, the, their, their bodies who have been left here on this earth will be changed, and they will go up. Then we, then we who remain will be changed. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, will be changed. And at that point in time, when the rapture event occurs, the entire body of Christ now has been removed from the earth. And we are with the Lord in a resurrected body. But let's look on as, as we see this sequence, because that's what we're talking about. What are we going to see when the rapture event occurs? We're talking about what are believers going to see and what are unbelievers going to see. And we're discussing what a believer will see right now. The first thing that we see is in the sequence is that Paul says that the Lord himself will descend from heaven. I like that. Jesus Christ himself 
is coming from heaven. He's leaving heaven, coming to the earth. He's not touching down on the earth, but he's coming to the earth where he will be in the atmosphere, in the clouds above the earth. We will see that. We will see him come back in the clouds. We will look up one day and we will say, my, 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 those clouds look a little different today. Hey, wait a minute. Who's that in the clouds? It looks like Jesus. And wait a minute. It looks like there's angels around him. Oh, yeah, believers are going to see this. I'm firmly convinced that we will see the Lord Jesus descend and, and from heaven and be in the clouds above the earth. And then we will hear a shout. Paul says that there will be a shout. We will hear that shout. Our ears will hear that shout. Then he says, Paul says, there will be a voice of an archangel. I'm looking forward to hearing what that archangel says. It doesn't say in scripture what the archangel says. But we will hear that shout. We will hear that voice of an archangel. And then Paul mentions that we will hear the trumpet of God. There is a trumpet of God, not some old beat up rusty trumpet sitting in a corner somewhere. This is the trumpet of God. And when the trumpet of God is blown, we will hear that sound. We will hear that frequency. That frequency then will cause a chain reaction. I'm talking about the mechanics of the rapture right now. I'm not going to get very deep into this right now in this, in this lesson, but we're talking about the mechanics of the rapture. When the trumpet of God is sound, it emits a frequency. This frequency goes throughout the entire earth. And for those believers, those who are born again, that frequency will create a chain reaction in our DNA. Our DNA then will create this resurrected body through the frequency that comes from the trumpet of God. And, and, and we will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. What about those who are dead, Pastor Mike? You said they go first. They do. When the trumpet blast sounds, the dead in Christ. Hold on now. What, what, who's dead? Those believers who died, their spirits have come back with the Lord, but their bodies are still here. You see, they need a resurrected body, just like Jesus has a resurrected body. So they're going to get their old one back, but it's going to be new and improved. And when the trumpet sounds, when the trumpet blast sounds, that frequency will create a cascading chain reaction, even in their bodies. Well, what if they're what if they're burned up? What if they decayed to dust? Their molecules are still here. Their atoms are still here on the earth. And that frequency will reconfigure and reformat every human's body back to first its original state and then to a resurrected body. The dead in Christ will rise first. And these resurrected bodies will go through the air at, at speeds above, uh, beyond uh, light beyond sound beyond light and they will be reunited in the atmosphere above the earth with the lord then we who are still on this earth i believe i'll be one of those people and probably most of you watching this video we will still be here when the rapture event occurs then we who are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and this corruptible body will put on incorruption this mortal body will become a resurrected body. And we are caught up to be with the Lord. That's the rapture. And that's what we will experience when this great rapture event occurs. We will see the Lord come back. We will hear the trumpet sound. And we will be changed. Now, that trumpet blast will only affect those who are Christians. Those who have been born again. It will change our bodies in an instant to a resurrected body. And then we are caught up. We are caught up to be with the Lord. The unsaved, though, the unsaved, the blasphemer, the demon-possessed, those who have rejected and denied Jesus Christ, will not see, nor will they hear what we see and hear. They may see clouds. They may even see figures in the clouds above the earth at the, point, at the time of the rapture. But they won't recognize it as Jesus Christ, our Lord. They may hear a noise. It may sound like thunder. It may even sound like a trumpet, but it will have no effect on them. Haven't you read that Jesus said in Scripture, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. These people are not his. 
They are not his children. They are not born again. And so when he comes back, they won't see, they won't hear the same things we will see and hear. Or what about 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9? But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who loved him. You see, there's going to be a difference between what believers see at the rapture and what non-believers see at the rapture. We're going to see our blessed hope, Jesus Christ, come back. They're not going to see nor experience that. The non-believer is going to miss out on the greatest event of humanity. It's going to happen right before their eyes, but they won't see it. They won't hear it. Why? Because they never wanted to see Jesus before the rapture. They never wanted to hear Jesus before the rapture. They never wanted to go to church to hear about Jesus. They never wanted to hear the preaching of the word of God. They had excuses. They had too much time on their hands. They were fulfilling the lust of their flesh. They didn't have time for God. They thought he was a crutch. They didn't have time for him. And so when he returns, they won't even see it. They mocked God. They jeered God in their lifetime. They made fun of people who believed in God and thought they were simple-minded. They hardened their hearts when God went to them over and over and over again. And maybe we ourselves have witnessed to some of these people over and over again. We tell them about the goodness of God and how they must be born again. But they hardened their hearts. They refused to listen. Then when the Lord Jesus comes back, they will not see, nor will they hear. They analyzed and they reasoned amongst themselves why Jesus is not really who he says he is. Why Jesus is not the only way. Why he might be one way. But there are many ways, Pastor Mike. There are many ways to, to heaven. All we have to do is believe something. All we have to do is coexist. And we can take a little bit of this from one religion, a little bit of that from another, and we can get, take all the good, and we can get there on our own way. That is false. That's wrong. And this is what multitudes of people are believing. They are believing in, in, in some made-up religion. They don't have time for God. They don't want to seek God. They don't want to hear God. And when he returns at the rapture, they're not going to see him. They're not going to hear him. In fact, they joke about the rapture. They ridicule the rapture. They say, we've heard this since the 70s and 80s and 90s. Every year you guys talk about the Lord Jesus coming back, and he never does. So when he does come back, they won't see, nor they, will they hear the same thing we see and hear. Because we go up, and they'll stay here. So what happens to those people who end up missing the rapture? What happens to those people when the rapture occurs and they don't go? Let's look at the reaction. Let's look at the reaction in Revelation chapter 6. I'm closing it down now. Revelation chapter 6, John describes the rapture as well. But he describes the rapture from the other side of the point of view, from the point of view who are those who are left behind. And John said, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. At the rapture, there will be a great earthquake, not little some minor tremor that we've experienced here on the earth before. This will be a quaking, a shaking of the entire earth. Every rock, every pebble will be moved. Everything will be moved at this great earthquake when the rapture event occurs. And people will see that. They'll see the sun be blackened out and the moon turn blood red. Verse 13, the stars of heaven will fall to the earth like a fig tree drops its late figs when it's shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky will recede up as a scroll when it is rolled up. I like that. That's a perfect example of what's going to happen at the rapture. John is describing what the rapture is going to look like when it happens to those people who don't go. The sky looks like it's rolled up like a scroll. Of course it's going to look like that. When you have hundreds of millions of people, first the dead in Christ being resurrected and then being raptured, going at the speed beyond sound, at the speed of light up into the atmosphere to meet the Lord Jesus in the clouds, 
Then we who are alive are changed in a moment and we too are blasting off through the atmosphere. Of course it's going to look like the sky is rolling up like a scroll. You have hundreds of millions of people leaving this planet, going to be with the Lord at, at a supersonic speed. And now let's see how the people react at the rapture. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, the slaves, every slave, every free man, hid themselves in caves. They hide themselves in dark places. They cry out to the mountains and rocks to fall on them. They, they want to hide from the face. They cry here, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. I guess by this point in time, after they see what has happened to the earth, they realize they missed the rapture. It was real. And now they're hiding from the Lamb of God. They're not repenting. They're not crying out to God. They missed the rapture. And, 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 and now it's too late for them. This is their reaction the instant it happens. They hide in dark places and they cry to the mountains to fall on them. There's no repentance. There's no mass conversions. There's no uh, tribulation saints piling up together in the multitudes and all becoming mighty an army for God that's going to go and fight the, the Antichrist. That's in the movies. That's in the movies. There is no mass repentance. There is no mass conversions. These people are hiding from God. They're blaspheming from God. Their fate has, has, has left them behind. And, and they will begin to, to go to, into a state of rebellion. They'll believe the strong delusion, probably the alien abduction theory that they're even floating out there right now. They'll receive the mark of the beast. They'll have a worldwide hatred for God. I'm talking about those who are left behind. And then it will culminate at the battle of Armageddon. Today is the day to choose Jesus Christ. Today is the day to make sure that you're rapture ready. You must be born again. Get born again today. One minute after the rapture happens will be too late. One minute after the rapture happens is too late. Do it today. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. If you need to have a prayer request, please send it in. I'll pray with you and for you. So until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming. God bless you.